In this video, we're going to talk about acids and bases. You've probably seen acids portrayed in TV and movies as bright green substances that are able to eat away other materials and even turn people into supervillains. Now, of course, this portrayal of acids isn't entirely true, but acids can be pretty nasty stuff. Acids are usually corrosive, and they're usually uh, able to react with metals. They also have a sour flavor. An example of this is citric acid, which is what makes lemons sour. They're also able to change the color of chemical indicators. These are dyes that change color uh, depending on what kind of substance they're in contact with. Um, an example is that an acid is going to turn litmus paper red. Litmus paper is just a paper that's been um, soaked in this chemical called litmus and it'll change to a red color if it's in the presence of an acid. And finally, acids can form aqueous solutions. This means that they can dissolve in water and they can become electrolytes. And electrolytes are substances that are going to conduct electricity when they dissolve into water. Now, acids have kind of an arch nemesis, and we call these things bases. A base can neutralize an acid, so bases are kind of considered to be the opposite of an acid. Bases have a bitter taste, and hopefully you've never had to have your mouth washed out with soap, but if you have, you've tasted the bitterness of a base. Bases are also going to have a slippery feel, it's kind of like that soap feeling. And like acids, bases are going to be able to change the color of a chemical indicator. And so, for example, a base is going to turn litmus paper a blue color. And then finally, bases will also form electrolytes when they're dissolved into water. So they're able to conduct electricity. So these are the properties of acids and bases, and scientists have been observing these properties for centuries. An actual definition for an acid or a base has been much more difficult to agree upon. There have been three main definitions, or in other words, theories, of acids and bases, and we're going to look at each one of those. The first is called the Arrhenius acid base theory, and then we'll look at the bronsted lorry and finally the Lewis definition. So here's the first one. Arrhenius explained acids as compounds that contain hydrogen, and therefore they are going to yield hydrogen ions when they dissolve into water. Bases, on the other hand, are compounds that are going to yield hydroxide ions when they dissolve into water. Now, a lot of times you're going to hear these hydrogen ions called protons, and that's because a normal hydrogen atom is going to contain one proton in the nucleus of uh, the atom, and then one electron that's orbiting around the outside. Now, when the hydrogen atom becomes uh, an ion, the H-plus ion here, it's going to lose that electron, and so it's just a proton in the end. Now, some uh, compounds are going to contain one hydrogen, and so they only have one ion that could be produced. So, for example, hydrochloric acid, HCl, just has the one hydrogen, so we call it a monoprotic acid. Mono means one, and then proton is just referring to that proton. And you can see we could also have a diprotic or a triprotic. It just depends on the number of hydrogens. Whatever kind of acid we're dealing with, with the Arrhenius acid and base, the proton here and the hydroxide ion are going to react together just to form water. And so this is kind of a general reaction of what's going to take place when an acid and base neutralize each other. The next definition is called the bronsted lorry definition. And these were two scientists that found a bit of a problem with the Arrhenius definition. They found out that there are substances um, that don't contain OH, or the hydroxide ion, but will still act like a base. For example, sodium bicarbonate, or in other words, baking soda, is a base and it's able to neutralize acids like vinegar. You may have mixed baking soda and vinegar together, and you can see that this co compound doesn't contain the hydroxide ion, this ion that we talked about earlier on. And so they modified the definition to say that acids are going to be compounds that can donate a hydrogen ion. And then bases are compounds that can accept that H plus ion. Here's a good example of this. In this example, HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, is going to donate a, pro a proton to water. And so HCl is acting like the acid, whereas water is going to be acting like the base. The leftover chloride ion right over here, uh, we can say is the conjugate base of HCl. And so that's going to make this ion over here, the H3O+, the conjugate acid of the H2O. 
This word conjugate just kind of means partner. And so these things are paired up with each other. And so I've circled the acids in green and I've circled the bases in red. And so we could see that when this proton right here is given over to the water, the HCl is going to become a chloride ion. This chloride ion is no longer able to give away a proton. It doesn't have one anymore. But it could, if we could reverse this arrow and draw it going the other way, it could accept a proton from this compound and it can act like a base. And so whenever we're looking at a chemical equation like this, there's always going to be pairs with each other. We'll have a conjugate acid paired up with a conjugate base. That's these two things right here. It's important to know that conjugate acid-base pairs are only going to differ by one H. And the acid of the pair, so these two differ by one hydrogen, and the acid is always the one with more hydrogens. So when we look at these two guys here, uh, the H3O plus is going to be the acid. Now this is an important one to note here, this ion, because we're going to see it quite a bit. This is called hydronium. And hydronium is just a water molecule that has gained a proton. One final example here of a bronsted lori acid base reaction is that water can actually react with itself. So here we can see one water molecule is acting like a base, whereas the other is acting like an acid. Substances that can act like both an acid and a base are called amphoteric. Okay, here's our final definition. This is called the Lewis definition. And Lewis proposed another definition because he found substances that could be acids and not even contain hydrogen at all. The Lewis definition says that an acid is going to accept a pair of electrons. And then the definition of a base is that a base is going to donate a pair of electrons. This definition is a bit confusing, but here's an example. Aluminum chloride can react with uh, a single chloride ion to form this new compound right here. And this chloride ion, because it has the negative charge there, means it has an extra pair of electrons. This uh, aluminum chloride compound would actually be able to accept that extra pair of electrons. So in this example, because the chloride ion has that extra pair of electrons, it's going to be the base, whereas the aluminum chloride over here is going to act like the acid. Okay, let's recap really quick. The Arrhenius definition says that acids yield H plus ions or hydrogen ions and bases yield hydroxide ions. Bronson Lori says that acids will donate a hydrogen ion, whereas bases will accept that hydrogen ion. And finally, Lewis said that acids are compounds that will accept a pair of electrons, whereas bases are able to donate a pair of electrons. And those are acids and bases.